Shalom and welcome to Jewish Life, the show about people and issues in Judaism and some secrets you missed in Hebrew school. On our show we have discussed art quite a few times. We've introduced you to some Hasidic artists. Art, an expression of our past. Art that expresses our present the way we like to see it. And of course art expresses our hopes, our dreams and our future. Even as the camera is rolling and virtual imagery is able to produce anything you want with today's technology, somehow the artist has not lost his favor upon the people. He takes their hearts, he takes their minds, he takes their hopes, he takes their dreams, puts it on canvas, and you're going to see it all over. Whether it is the king's palace, the royal palace, presidential palaces, or ordinary homes, even your plain folk would like to get at least a duplicate of some painter's work that identifies with his heart and his emotions and his feelings. Therefore, I'm pleased to have with me today as my guest, Mr. Rafael Nuriel. He is an artist who was born in Iran, yeah. Azerbaijan, yes. and Persia, and he now lives in London and is here in the United States on the occasion of an exhibition of his work. Welcome to New York and thanks for coming to the show. Let us start with your profession. Sure. What type of artist in broad terms do you consider yourself? Well, I consider myself a classical painter, artist, and I'm not a modern painter. Abstract? No, no abstract, no cu cubism. I like realism, but not realism like a camera does. A step forward. Like, I like to paint everything, but include feeling and emotion, something which camera lacks. Uh, who did you paint throughout your career? How long ago did you start your career? Well, I started my career... Well, I started painting when I was 10 years old, right? My career, I started. Who did you paint then? Who commissioned you? <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. When I was a child in the school, right? Two favorite characters I paint for every single member of my class. Tarzan and Moses the prophet. Aha. So these were your two opposites. Yeah, and two every, two yeah, every, 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 uh, every uh, friend, he had a co two copy. Tarzan, Moses. Tarzan, Moses. That's where you started. <laughs> and then? Then at the age of 13 and a half, I went to a, uh, to a private art academy of Mr. Reza Samimi. He was an eminent uh, portrait painter of King of Iran. I, stu I studied there for four years. Then, when he left to France, I continued to paint in Iran until age of 26. Then I went to France, to Ecole du Bozar, the renowned art school there. Then from Paris, I went to Israel, then I married. I came back to Iran for, I lived three and a half years. And when I was in Iran, I had gallery. Uh, I had studio. You had your own gallery in your own studio and you were doing what? You were doing portraits? I, I did portraits, port portraiture, and exhibited time to time in that gallery, my own gallery. Also, I had classes to teach art. Among my pupil, there was Prime Minister's brother. Prime Minister's brother. The Prime Minister of ex Iran? Ex-Prime Minister's brother of Iran was my pupil. Mm -hmm. One day in secret, well, as, as a prime minister, he wanted to come and uh, work privately. Right. Understandable. He was looking, sitting one, in one corner of a studio, and I was sitting in, uh, in the other corner of a studio and painting. Whenever he needed me, he used to call me. I used to go and make a comment over his work. One day, as he was painting, I must, tell, I must tell you something. When you paint, like you drink a little bit of alcoholic drinks, things slip out of your mouth. You don't speak on normal circumstances. <laughs> As I was painting... Is that an admission of an artist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. As he was painting, and I was painting, he broke the silence. He said to me, Raphael, why do you live in this country? I said, what is wrong with this country? 
nothing, you're Jewish. I said, Judaism is my religion. My nationality happened to be Persian. He said, yes, having, having said so, still, you are Jewish. I said, I repeat it, Judaism is my religion. My nationality is Persian. He reminded me, I'm a Jew. I reminded him, I'm Persian. I, Didn't then, work. No. Then he said to me, I, I got very uh, uncomfortable. I said, do you realize, Mr. Razmara was his name, we Jews have history of 2,500 years since Queen Esther. In this country. In this country. Even deeper than Islam. After so many years, you are telling me I'm not belong to this land? He said, I'm sorry, I didn't want to, uh, to, to hurt, you. hurt you. I want to help you. Sooner or later, there will be a revolution. Then you minority, especially Jew Jewish people, will be in trouble. Get out of here. Just like that? Just like that. I was frightened. I thought maybe it's a secret police or Savak or something. Well, he was trying to catch me. I tried to be a bit smart. I said, no, 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 there is nowhere, uh, nothing better than this country. I had to say that. Then he said, don't be smart. I'm not Savak. I just like you. You're a good artist. Get out of here. Wow. I always wanted to go so as an artist. So you saved your life practically yeah. this way. No, I always wanted to go and live in Europe for art. Is a wider place in London, Paris. But what he said, it was push. When I came home and I said that to my wife, uh, Mr. Razmara said that, she said, we are going. That's it. Okay, in a matter of two weeks, I was in London. Mm -hmm. What did you do as an artist? Uh, you had some major, I mean, you had the, pri the, 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 the nephew of the prime minister with you. Yeah. I'm sure you had some connections in high circles. Sure, sure. I painted the portrait of King of Iran. Of the Shah. Of the, the Shah of Iran. The Shah, right? Yes. And I also painted the portrait of Prince Reza, his son, mm -hmm. when he was child. For, for Queen Mother of, uh, of Iran, I've painted it. So yeah. you were well connected on that level. Yeah. And that in a way saved your life. I hope so. Well, okay, so we have this part that you, uh, your past history of which you ran away, and you had to cut your two and a half thousand years heritage in that country. Now that you moved to London, who did you uh, right. uh, go to? I who did you paint since then? I had a few, a numbers of exhibitions in galleries and different constitutions in Iran, in, sorry, in London. Uh, in London, I have painted um, Dr. Henry Kissinger. I have painted the actress, John Collins, from Life City in her, in her uh, apartment. I, my, uh, I, uh, I acted from London. your art was exhibited? My art was exhibited in, in a, no a number of uh, ga galleries. Um, House of Commons? Yes, House of Commons. I had an exhibition of um, about one week exhibition I had in House of Commons. Um, Mrs. Lady Boothroyd, Speaker of the House of Commons, was uh, the guest of honor together with Mr. Peter Brook, the National Heritage for um, uh, the Sec Secretary, Secretary of Her National Heritage. Now we should introduce to our audience that up till now your story is that you're a Jew, but still not a very active or practicing Jew. No. Now we're going to be talking about a turn that took in your life. You were Persian, yes. which makes you Sephardi pretty much sure. in a way. Yeah. I am American and Ashkenazi. I'm sorry, I want to interrupt you. Sure. I'm not only Persian. I am from Azerbaijan, Persia. And my nas national language is Aramaic. We so speak you're really original. <laughs> we you go the all the way back to the Talmud. Oh, yes. And before that. From the destruction of the first temple, right, when the Jews went captive in Babylon, afterward when the king of Persia fought with Babylonian, freed some of them and sent them back to Holy Land to rebuild their second <laughs> temple. Right. And some of them went back to Persia. Right. And I am. You are from that, that. From, that, uh, sure. from those people. Now, I know you live in London. Yeah. My wife comes from London too, but I don't know you from London. I don't know you from any of this. I, as a Lubavitcher, I know you because you became, in a way, one of the artists who have made some of the most beautiful paintings that are around from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Thank and you. I know that this has affected you. It has affected us all. So I want to talk about how did this happen? How does someone who classifies himself formally as a secular Jew, he painted kings, uh, ministers, 
uh, exhibitors, exhibits in, in, in parliaments. How, how did you come to this whole situation of, of uh, Lubavitch and what comes along with it? Well, when you say Lubavitch, in London we had Lubavitch neighbors. Um, they had, I didn't... You I, were like neighbors' neighbors? Yes, or yeah, you no, just no, 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 just next door neighbors. They were different, wearing black, on, sh on Shabbat, black hat, black, uh, um, black coat. And I always said, why are they, why they should be different than any other Jew? Right. Why? Until some story I'm going to tell you. There is someone which is very dear to me. We had a problem with. And she, when she was born, she never spoke until age of like four and a half years old. Because she didn't speak, she was shouting to express herself. As a result of intensive screaming, she developed a massive hernia, needed an operation. Now being a nervous child with a speech defect, we thought hospital environment may affect her even more and prevent her from ever speaking. Um, in this field, nobody could help. A night before operation, we wanted to go and ask our neighbor what to do. Lubavitch you neighbor. You were desperate. Desperate. But we you didn't go to him because he was a Lubavitcher. No, no. You no. just. Yeah. We went to them. We said, we said you are Lubavitch. You are um, Orthodox. And you have more children than any, anybody. Uh, and they went around, years. right? Therefore, more, more children, more experience. What would, you have, what, you, what would you have done if you were in our position? They said, we pray to God and we retail him, but there are more righteous people than you and I exist. We ask for the blessing. Anyway, since it was a desperate situation, when you are in a desperate situation, you prepare to believe everything. Yes, the, we ask them to ask blessing for the patients. And... Next door they phoned, I said, you can go to hospital, you can take the patient to hospital, no, nothing to worry about. And the Lubavitch Rebbe said, the real family will always hear good news from the Rebbe. Meaning, you agreed to their suggestion of prayer, yeah. even though, I mean, you really didn't believe in it, but as a desperation you agreed to that. Yeah. Then they called you back with a message that the Lubavitch Rebbe said... That is correct. ...that you will have only good news. Yes, yes. So... When uh, the patient went to hospital, a day before the operation, her mother, while she, they injected her with a general anesthetic before taking her to open the theater, her mother put, uh, pushed a book of Psalms under her pillow. If prayer does any good, let it well, be under her pillow. <laughs> and they took him. She was hoping to take the this uh, person to operate in theater. But uh, unfortunately, they came and uh, they transferred her from one bed to another. The book remained. It wasn't with her? No, it wasn't with her. After an hour of operation finished, they brought the child back. To the same bed? The same bed. And she slept for four hours constantly. And after four hours, something very, very strange happened, and I witnessed it. Suddenly, this child opened her eyes. And she sat in the bed like a robot. She started searching for the book. Book she never saw, we put it under her pillow. She opened it upside down, and for the first time in her life, he opened, she opened her lips, started singing, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher, with this nigun. Classical Jewish prayer that oh, yeah. we start the morning prayers yeah. with. Yeah. Maybe she, she, she knew it because she was going to kindergarten. In the same time, she could say, ring, ring, roses, many uh, other she stuff. She could have said anything, yeah. right? But why? Uh, I was just looking, looking, looking. I thought, I am imagining things. Yeah, but there were many people witnessed there. Two nurses, they said, we thought you said this she person doesn't speak. Doesn't speak. Why, why, why she's singing now? She's Then, uh, cut a long story short. She put back, uh, put back under her pillow. She started running through hospital corridors. She went end of the corridors. It was right room. after an operation. Yeah. 
She wants uh, a room full of toys, from all the toys. She chose a very, very huge, huge bicycle. Started biking after hernia operation with the fresh stitches <laughs> along the corridors of the hospital, backwards and forwards. Doctor said, look, she will open her stitches. Please control her. But there was like a force in her. I can do whatever I want. Nothing will happen to me. If they said, if, the, if, the, if this is the case, they, they she should go they home. take no responsibility. No, she should go home. Mm. OK, her mother took her home. And everything was fine. Yeah. And uh, that affected you? That affected me. Then uh, after a while, she started saying words, sentences, now. What was your next step? You went straight to Lubav Chereve? No. What, what happened was I became, I thought about I thought I must paint the Rebbe. I must paint the Rebbe. Because I knew it was a divine power. I knew it was a divine, di di divine power. I asked the doctors, how this can, how does something like this can be explained? They said, there are things in medicine you cannot explain. I knew it was a divine power, for sure. I looked at the lots of pictures of the Rebbe, looked at lots of videos of the Rebbe, decided to paint the Rebbe. But to paint the Rebbe, do you think it was something easy? No. To paint anybody, you, uh, for me, no. I am an artist. I want to hear more stories, so let's try to compact okay. as much as we can. Okay. I painted uh, monarchy, and I painted celebrities and so on, but I never painted a spiritual person. To paint a spiritual person, it was very difficult for me. Why? Because I must, I must understand him in order to paint his character on the canvas. I don't paint just a resemblance of a person. To do so, so much so I wanted to paint the Rebbe, I turned my life toward orthodoxy. I started laying tefillin. Because you wanted to paint the Rebbe? Yes, them. yes, keeping Shabbat and everything. Then I painted the Rebbe. One morning I came down, I cut a big piece of canvas. I, my wife said to me, are you tuned to paint the Rebbe? I said, yes, this morning I am tuned to paint the Rebbe. Of course, I started from lots of photographs, pre preliminary sketch, because Rebbe was in New York, I was in London, right? right? When I drew something, many times your hand doesn't go uh, smoothly, okay? You erase it with the eraser, you do it again. You wipe it, you do it again. But in this particular uh, instant, there was like a power conducting my hand to the destination of every single line. In no time, I saw the out uh, outline of the Rebbe there. So you made yes. your first portrait sure. outline? Yes. A few, we a few weeks later, I painted his eyes. Rabbi Sudak of England. He's the head emissary of Lubavitch, yes. right? Yes. He heard I am painting the Rebbe. He came and knocked our, our, on, on the door with our neighbor, of course. He said, I have heard that you are painting our Rebbe. Where is it? I said, Rabbi Sudak is not finished. No, 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 I must see it, he says. <laughs> it's not finished. He was very persistent. He came in. He saw painting of the Rebbe and finished, standing on the easel. He looked on, the, on his eyes. He said, wow, lots of artists painted the Rebbe. But this is the Rebbe. He must see it. He will get lots of nachat from this painting. I said, Rabbi Zuzak, believe it or not, I must take it to New York. I must speak to the Rebbe, then finish it, or else I can't. Then he was comforted. A few months later, we went to New York. I understood it was a Hasid, uh, some days, which is a Hasid calendar, very significant, Yud Bet. Yud Bet, the 12th of Tammuz, the, the release of the previous Rebbe from prison. That's right. Okay, just a few days before I have, we have arrived, I went to the office. I, the, uh, I wanted a private audience with the Rebbe. No chance. The <laughs> Rebbe is very busy now. It, it was so it how was do you get to meet the Rebbe? Okay, you know this uh, Yud Bet Tammuz? They had the big, the big Fabrengen, right? Yes, in 770. And I was among the crowd, sitting there. And Rebbe was giving the chayim to everybody. Suddenly I woke up and said to myself, Raphael, wake up. Just wake up. You see all these Hasidim here? They all are drunk. Yeah, they all are drunk. Nobody will wake up on time tomorrow morning. But Rebbe, I'm sure, will wake up on time and, to, and go to his office at 10 o'clock. So tomorrow morning is the best time to approach the Rebbe. Take advantage. Nobody yes, took him by surprise. <laughs> right. So tomorrow morning, uh, the next morning, with, I took the painting, me and my wife and our next door neighbor, which was with us. We covered it. I stood at the 770 Eastern Parkway, 
Lubavitch headquarters, I waited for the Rebbe to come to his office. As I, as I saw his, um, Rabbi Klein, his secretary, he went up. People said, if he went out, he means he, he, he went to bring the Rebbe. When his car approached, the Rebbe's car approached, um, um, Rabbi Klein went and he opened the door for uh, the Rebbe. As the Rebbe was coming out, I left the painting, I uncovered the painting, I, I went towards the Rebbe. I was going to say to the Rebbe, Rebbe, I am Raphael Nouril, I am an artist, I live in London, I painted your portrait, please give me your comments so over my painting. So the Rebbe painting? There was no need to say so. In split second he stood in front, in front of the painting and he made his first comment about his painting, about his hands, the way they are situated in the painting. He commented on that. Yes. I'll tell you exactly, we're, I should. We're, we're running out of time, so we can't get into too much details. Yeah. So you adjusted the painting yeah. according? Yes, the Rebbe said to me, Hands like this are prohibited. Hands should be in such a manner like that. I said, do you want me to change your hands, the Rebbe? Yes, change my hands like that. So there is direct involvement of the Rebbe. Then I said, Rebbe, what about the face? You always spoke about hands. He said, very good, it's better than the original. <laughs> I didn't know from excitement, okay, I started patting on Rebbe's shoulder, saying to the Rebbe, Rebbe, thank you, Rebbe, thank you. So suddenly I realized nobody pats on a leader's shoulder from, uh, from excitement I did so, not because I'm, I'm a rude person. The Rebbe understood I didn't feel comfortable, and he grabbed my hand and shook it warmly, and he wished me the surah to about good news. Well, this, this, is a, this is definitely an incredible introduction into your world with the Rebbe, and Rafal Nuri is going to be exhibiting his works, many of his works. One of them, one of the famous ones, is the one called Exodus. Um, finally, Home, the Exodus of Jews to the Land of Israel, and many other of his works. And all are welcome to participate and see this uh, exhibition. And if you want to contact us, the number is on the screen. You can call us, ask us, talk to us, question us, etc. And of course, we have our website where you can watch our show at any time. Mr. Nouriel, we have just about a minute left. I know that you had follow-up. You did one of your classic pictures. is about the Rebbe and his father-in-law. In a nutshell, tell us about it. But with his father-in-law? Yes. Or, uh, the picture about the Rebbe and his father-in-law. Well, when I became closer to Lubavitch, I became close to, the, to this ball. I understood Rebbe and his father in law, they had a special connection. I searched for the picture which I can paint from. Of course, uh, I'm going back to 1927. Uh, I found a very poor condition picture which I made a big, big painting out of, life size painting. A, a lovely a, picture of the Rebbe with yeah. his father in law, an engagement picture. I right. understand that. Yeah, I have showed it to the Rebbe, in fact. I went to his home in 1988. And what were his comments? He was very, very excited. He said, You should spread Judaism with your work, with the help of your missus. And I'm sure that your exhibits do this along with your other pictures that you have, which we'll talk about at a later date. And to our viewers, we want to wish you the best of luck. We want to wish you Baruch Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all the best. Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Say a boy, 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 say a boy